I think a significant number of organisations are underperforming anywhere between 15, 20, uh, 30 percent because they don't maximise the performance of their people. I think the other challenge for organisations is that they don't focus the effort of their people onto what really matters in terms of client service. How can we be efficient? How can we innovate? How can we optimise risk? What can we do? I think entrepreneurial leadership as a concept is a way that we might be able to use to take us forward into a world where some of those things are addressed. <laughs> Absolutely, and I guess part of the problem here, though, would be, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that there's the vote by the shareholders is non-binding, so it doesn't really force the bank to, to take action and no. cut pay, but what will they do? I mean, some would say they'd be pretty stupid to ignore it. Well, you effectively have more than half of your shareholders who do not approve your executive remuneration, whether it's non-binding or not. It's a fairly strong and significant message. Chris, great stuff, as always. Thanks. So, an inspirational manager, it seems, can make the world of difference to a football team. But what about business? I agree in some ways, but, but in other ways, let's be fair, bearing in mind the amount of money that those Chelsea players are getting each week... <laughs> it's a lot of they, it, Exactly, so if they, if they didn't score at all, they'd still be slightly better off than probably even Bob Diamond. But going to the organisational side of it, the CEO's role sometimes is overestimated. Within this debate about executive pay, people have completely forgotten the employees. We know that employees, if they like the example from the top of the organisation, can give up to 30% extra effort for the the same money in the same time. People are pushing forward, they're young, they're trying to make a name for themselves. Going to your boss and admitting that you've made a mistake is not too good. Um, entrepreneurs and businessmen, let's call them businessmen, they're not the same, are they? In general terms, no, they're not. And it's fair to say that the skills of being an entrepreneur and driving forward a business, being innovative, are not the same sort of skills that you need to run a large global organization. First of all, we hear this phrase, rogue trader, once again. How can it keep on happening, yes, sir? That is actually the big question that I suspect the banks are asking themselves as well. First of all, Chris, you get the sense that this is a fairly big moment for British banking. Yes, certainly. For British banking, this is a very big night. Putting in place policies, yep. real policies, yep. how difficult is it? It shouldn't be that difficult because it's just the way a good organisation should work. You were telling me there are three irreconcilable positions. Yeah, on this and, issue. and, Tell and me more that's, about that. that's the key problem. And I think uh, the three positions don't really understand each other that much. The Chris Roebuck, you used to work for a major international bank. What does it mean for British banks when the likes of Goldman Sachs announce substantial bonuses? The British banks have no choice but to go along with it. Anyone um, come out better on the back of this, despite the rhetoric? The interesting thing is that actually there's different audiences watching what happened. Банкиров лондонского сети пытаются приучить к скромности. В начале года финансисты традиционно получают... воюющие в Афганистане за всю их жизнь. Se la cultura che domina in banca è quella che pretende la perfezione per fare carriera e guadagnare più soldi.